because I truly believe that 90% of our problems can be solved if we put aside our petty differences and just unify. What we're, what we're here to address today is the powder keg that is Houston, Texas, and every other major city and many small towns in the United States of America right now. We're here to address what we call the pre-existing conditions. Pre-existing conditions. There were pre-existing conditions in Baltimore. What we see is the response from the injustice that took place during the death of Freddie Gray, but what we don't see is the years and years and years of pre-existing joblessness, hopelessness, poor health care, poverty, pre-existing conditions. And when you go into to, to get you some insurance, uh, what they want to know is whether or not you have some pre-existing conditions. And if you have a pre-existing condition, that insurance may cost you a little bit more. Why? Because if you got pre-existing conditions, you're more likely to get a disease that might cost them some money. So we've got many pre-existing conditions here in the city of Houston that need to be addressed. And uh, as Pastor Dixon already said, and Brother Douglas and everyone else who has spoken, they spoke on those pre-existing conditions. The leadership in the city needs to pay attention or else Houston will become Baltimore. Now, what many of us don't know is that since the Baltimore uprising, something has already happened right here in the city of Houston. On yesterday, a young 23-year-old man by the name of Jeremiah Matthews at 1 a.m. in the morning walked into a Southwest Houston Walmart. He took a hunting knife and he stabbed a Houston Community College police officer who was there on duty working the second job 14 times. As we stand here today, that young lady is in the hospital fighting for her life. That young man was arraigned this morning and charged with attempted capital murder. When, the, when HPD detectives interviewed him, they asked him why he did what he did. He said that he just wanted to kill a police officer. Those were his words, according to HPD. And unfortunately, that's the way he chose to act out what was on his mind. So this press conference that we're having right now is extremely timely. And while we don't have the optics of a building on fire, we don't have that kind of explosion. But there's very little that you can talk to me about that's more explosive. Then, a, then a, a female police officer being stabbed almost 14 times by somebody else. That didn't happen in Baltimore. That didn't happen in, uh, in uh, Missouri. That happened right here in Houston, Texas just yesterday. So we can continue to walk around with blindfolds on as if though we don't see what, what's happening. And um, this right here is a call to action. The last thing we wanna say is this. We want to speak to the district attorney. We want to speak to the mayor. We want to speak to the powers that be in this city and make sure that they understand that there is no substitute for justice. Right. It's just no right. substitute. Right. We can increase joblessness. We can get body cameras. We can increase diversity. We can improve the educational system. But until police officers pay the same price for killing us, that we pay for killing them, then there is no justice and Houston is just Baltimore waiting to happen. It's going to happen. So what that young man did in that Walmart yesterday, I believe is a sign. Before the thunderstorm, God always gives you lightning. He always gives you thunder. Before the downpour, he always gives you just a slight drizzle. So we believe that his mindset was a microcosm of a macrocosm, of a mentality that's spreading throughout the entire country. So this thing has not only become dangerous for we as citizens, it's become extremely dangerous for police officers. So if you are a law enforcement officer, if I were you, I'd be fighting for justice just as hard as the people standing on these steps out here because they're making it just as dangerous for you. So um, I end my short words saying what I always say. 
Just as you cannot clean a dirty floor with a dirty mop, you cannot clean dirty city streets with dirty cops. And when police officers prove themselves to be dirty, it is the responsibility of leadership to get rid of those. And the longer we wait to make the, the hard decision to deal justice on both sides of the fence, the more and more we risk Houston becoming the next Baltimore. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.